Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Need Preparation, we'll be looking at previous year questions of physics in medical entrance examinations in India. Today, we're dealing with the chapter Moving Charges and Magnetism. It's one of the most important chapters of grade 12, and this is the fourth chapter in the grade 12 syllabus for physics in CBSE. Today, let's look at our first question. Two parallel beams of positrons moving in the same direction. Will A, repel each other, B, will not interact with each other, C, attract each other, or D, be deflected normal to the plane containing the two beams? Let's start by drawing our diagram to illustrate this phenomenon. So we have, where are they? Yes, so we have two positrons. So we have two beams. So there are many positrons that are behind this one. So we have two parallel beams of positrons. So both of these have the same charge. And since they're moving, we can consider these two to be two parallel straight line conductors because they are basically two beams of uh, positrons moving along a certain direction and they're parallel to each other. So therefore they are acting as two parallel straight line conductors. So when it comes to force due to the two parallel straight line conductors, force will be same if charges move along in the same direction. So when, when charges move along in the same direction, the force will be attractive and the force will be repulsive if the two currents charges have currents that flow in opposite directions because by using the right hand thumb rule we find that one of the for the first conductor the magnetic field goes into the plane while for the second conductor it goes out of the plane so therefore there is a mutual attraction. So therefore, since here the positrons are parallel and their par parallel beams moving in the same direction, so therefore option C, attracting each other, will be the right option. The only time that option A will work is when they both are moving opposite to each other. And B deflected normal to the plane containing the two beams is incorrect because they need to have separate magnet an external magnetic field for that, which is not given. And option B will not interact with each other is incorrect because they will have magnetic fields around them. So therefore they must interact with each other. So option C attract each other is the right option because of the force due to two parallel straight line conductors. And since the current is in the same direction, we find that the force will be attractive. So they attract each other. Let's look at our next question. A proton and an alpha particle moving with the same velocity enter a uniform magnetic field acting normal to the plane of their motion. The ratio of the radii of the circular paths described by the proton and alpha particle is. So we have a magnetic field and we find that a proton has entered it and now it undergoes a circular motion and we have an alpha particle which enters the same magnetic field and it also goes around in circular motion. So for a proton, let's consider the mass as M and, we, and let's consider the charge as Q. So if this is so, then for an alpha particle, the charge will be equal to 2Q and the mass will be equal to 4M. An alpha particle is basically a helium nucleus without its electrons. So an alpha particle is a helium nucleus, so that has two protons and two neutrons, so twice the charge of a proton and four times the mass of a proton. So this is 
the situation given. So we need to find out the ratio of the radii of the circular paths described. So for motion of a charged particle, which is perpendic which is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, such as in the given, given condition, we will have the radius of the circular path R is equal to MV by BQ. For, for protons, the radius of the circular path of a proton will be MV by BQ. However, for an alpha particle, it will be equal to 4M times V divided by B times 2Q. So therefore, 2 goes into 4 twice. So our alpha will be equal to 2MV by BQ. So the ratio between the radius of the proton and the radius of the alpha particle will be MV by BQ whole divided by 2MV by BQ. So that will be equal to 1 divided by 2. So radius of proton is the radius of alpha particle will be equal to 1 is to 2. And that is found in option A, which is the right option. Now, 1 is to 4 would have been the ratio if there was no change in charge, but there was a change in mass. And 4 is to 1 and 1 is to 16 are also other, present in other scenarios, but not in the specific scenario where a proton and alpha particle are moving in circular motion when they are moving perpendicular to the magnetic field and they enter the magnetic field. So the radius of proton varies with the radius of alpha particle and the ratio 1 is to 2 which is option A. Let's look at our next question. The circular loop of a wire and a long straight wire carrying, and a long straight wire, they carry different currents, IC and IE respectively. Assuming that these are placed in the same plane, the magnetic fields will be zero at the center of the loop when the separation H is. So let's put in the diagram. So as you can see, we have a circular coil, and then we have a straight coil, which is some distance from it. So this distance h, we need to find out when we have the condition that the magnetic field of the straight current carrying conductor and the magnetic field of the circular loop will be equal and opposite. So the condition here is magnetic field of straight wire will be equal and opposite to the magnetic field of the circular loop of wire. So let's write down the formula for the magnetic field. So for a straight wire, the magnetic field B will be equal, let's say BS, so BS will be equal to mu naught into IE, which is the current flowing through the straight current carrying conductor, divided by 2 pi times the displacement between the point and the wire. So in this case, distance between the center of the circular loop and the wire, which is capital H. Now for the circular loop, the magnetic field at the center of the loop will be equal to mu naught IC, which is the current in the circular loop, divided by two times the radius of the loop, which is capital R. So our condition states that mu naught IE divided by 2 pi H is equal to mu naught IC divided by 2 R. So mu naught and mu naught gets canceled. 2 and 2 gets canceled. So we have IE by pi H is equal to IC divided by R. 
on cross multiplying will get pi h times i c will be equal to i e times r. So let's keep h on the left hand side. So we will get i e times r divided by pi times i c. So this is the value of h when the magnetic field of the straight wire and the circular loop are equal and opposite. And this condition is equal to option A. So option A is the right option. In option B, the currents are interchanged. In option C, the, the ratio in option C, the value here is given as 1 by h instead of h and in option d it's 1 by h but the current is now inverted so it's basically the inverse of option b which is incorrect so the right answer is option a h is equal to ie times r divided by ic times pi Next question, what is the magnetic field at a distance r from a coil of radius small r carrying the current i? Well, let's look at the figure which supports this equation. So you see that we have a coil of radius small r and it is at, and the point p is at a distance of capital R. And so we have A will be equal to root of small r square plus capital R square, the whole root. And so we need to find the magnetic field at the point P. So over here, we will use the biot saverts law. And we will be looking at the horizontal component of the magnetic field because all the vertical components will be will already be cancelled due to their equal and opposite counterparts so we will be looking at a specific part of the circle which is dl and we'll be looking at the magnetic field db which is corresponding to dl so magnetic field due to dl the small element will be equal to db is equal to mu naught by 4 pi which is permeability times i into the radius small r divided by r square plus small r capital r square plus small r square the whole raised to 3 by 2 times dl so now what we do on applying line integral so on applying line integral it will be b which is equal to line integral of db which will be equal to line integral of mu naught by 4 pi times i small r divided by capital R square plus small r square, the whole raised to three by two times DL, which in effect becomes mu naught by four pi times I into small r divided by small r square plus capital R square, the whole raised to three by two times line integral of DL. So since this is a line integral, the total distance, the total length L will be equal to the to the circumference of a circle so the value of b will be equal to mu naught by 4 pi times i into small r divided by small r square plus capital r square the whole raised to 3 by 2 times 2 pi small r because small r is the radius of the coil. So in this case, 2 multiplies with 4 2 times, 
pi and pi gets canceled. So we will have the value of the magnetic field B equal to mu naught I small r square divided by two times of capital R square plus small r square, the whole raised to three by two. So this is our answer. And the correct option will be option B. Now, mu naught I by two R, which is option C, will be the, mag the magnetic field at the center O, so it's incorrect. And option D will be downright incorrect because the radius here is given as the horizontal distance. So it's likely that they're doing a different coil altogether, which is incorrect. And option A is also incorrect because the R mentioned at the numerator is the horizontal distance, where and in fact, we should be looking at the radius of the current carrying coil. So it'll be small r square instead of capital R square. That's what makes option B the right option. So we use the byatt savarts law it, by, and we found the horizontal component of the, um, of the point P and that was, that was due to one element of length DL. And then on integration, we got the total amount of magnetic field and that will be that was equal to mu naught i small r square divided by two times capital r square plus small r square the whole raised to three by two so that is our answer let's look at this question a long straight wire of radius a carries a steady current i the current is uniformly distributed across its cross section the ratio of the magnetic field at A by 2 and 2A is. So this is close enough to the diagram that we're of the situation. So we have a current carrying conductor, a long straight wire of cross section A. We need to find the ratio of magnetic field at A by 2 and 2A. So we have to draw Ampere's diagram for both A by 2 and 2A, and we will apply the Ampere circuital law. And that states that the line integral of magnetic field times DL will be equal to mu naught times the enclosed current. So first, we'll be looking at the case for the loop with radius for the ampere loop with radius a by two. So, so on integration, we'll get the formula b times two pi into a by two will be equal to and the current enclosed will be equal to pi a by two the whole square divided by pi a square into i. So the right hand side will become mu naught into one by pi a square into a by two the whole square pi times capital I. From here onwards, we can write it as mu naught times pi one by pi a square into pi a square by four times I, pi a square, pi a square gets canceled. So we'll get mu naught I divided by four on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we will write we will cancel two on the denominator and the numerator. So we will get B times A pi will be equal to mu naught I. So therefore the final magnetic field will be equal to mu naught I divided by four pi times A. 
So over here, the enclosed current has a special formula, pi a by two, the whole square divided by pi a squared times the total current. So that is how you find the enclosed current. So it means that to enclosed current divided by total current will be equal to the area of the Ampere's loop the, divided by the total cross-sectional area of the conductor. Now, let's go for the second case. In the second case, for the Ampere circuital loop with R is equal to 2A, we will have the magnetic field as B dash, and it will be times 2 pi into 2A will be equal to mu naught times I. And the reason why is that 2A is larger than A and the whole amount of current will be present inside A. So therefore, the total amount of current is actually enclosed. So B into 2 pi times 2A becomes mu naught I. So B dash times 4 pi A will be equal to mu naught I. And B dash will be equal to mu naught I divided by 4 pi A. So as you can see, both are actually equal. So therefore, when we take their ratio, which is B by B dash, that will be equal to mu naught I divided by 4 pi A, whole divided by mu naught I divided by 4 pi A. So all of them get canceled. So finally, you will have your ratio will be equal to 1. So since both of them are exactly the same, whether it is A by 2 or 2A, so therefore the ratio of the magnetic field at A by 2 and 2A will be equal to option D, 1. That means that both the magnetic field at A by 2 and the magnetic field at 2A will be one and the same. And we found, out, found it out by using the Ampere circuital law. And now we move on to the final question. In a mass spectrometer used for measuring the masses of ions, the ions are initially accelerated by an electric potential V and then made to describe semicircular paths of radius capital R using a magnetic field B. If V and B are kept constant, so V means electric potential and B means magnetic field, so if these are kept constant, we need to find how is the charge on the how is the charge by mass ratio of the ion proportional to the radius of the semicircular path so in a semicircular path the first condition is that the magnetic force will be equal to the centripetal force So therefore, mv squared by r, which is the formula for centripetal force, will be equal to qv times b. So note that this v, which is small, stands for velocity. And one of the v's get canceled again, but since it will be, but again, still it will be mv by r divided by q. mv by r is equal to qb. So let's take m to the other side. So it becomes v by r is equal to qb by m. Now we know that the angular velocity omega is also written as v divided by capital R. So again, radius is capital R, not small r, because it's given here. So since omega angular velocity is linear velocity divided by the radius, so we can write omega as qb by m. Let's take both of these as equations one. Now let's move on to the equation for the energy of the ion. So energy of the ion, which is E, will be equal to half mv square. And as always, let's change v by putting omega, so half m let's put v is equal to r omega so it'll be r square omega square and we'll put the value of omega so half m capital r square capital b square q square divided by small m square so 
one of the M's gets cancelled. So finally, we'll have energy is equal to half capital half into M into R square into B square into Q square divided by M. So it'll, the M will be on the denominator because here it is M raised to one, there it is M raised to two. So M raised to one gets completely canceled and the denominator becomes M raised to one. So it'll be half R square, B square, Q square divided by M. So this is the value for energy. And in this question, it's given that the ions are initially accelerated by an electric potential V. And therefore, since ions are accelerated by electric potential V, capital V, so we can write the value of energy as Q times capital V. And let's consider this as our equation number three. So now we have two expressions for energy. So from equation two and equation three, we will get Q times capital V is equal to half into B square times R square times Q square divided by M. So Q is on the denominator on both sides. So we can cancel one of these out. So we will get V, which is the electric potential, that will be equal to half into capital B square times capital R square times Q by M. So therefore, let's keep Q by M on one side and all of these go on to the other side. So therefore, Q by M will be equal to 2V divided by R square B square. So this is the charge to mass ratio. And what this and what this this ratios formula indicate, Q by M of this ion will be inversely proportional to the square of the radius. So therefore, the right ratio, the right proportion here for charge of the ion divided by mass on the ion, the Q by M ratio, will be actually proportional to the inverse of R square. So option B will be the right option. And so here we, since initially it is, since it's made to describe in semicircular paths, we use the, uh, we use the centripetal force as the magnetic force. And from there we found the value of omega. And again, then we used energy and we replaced the value of V with R omega and using energy. We found out one expression of energy using R square, B square, Q square, and M. And since these ions were initially accelerated by V, we could write the energy as Q times electric potential. So there is Q times potential. So then we have two expressions for energy and then we pitted them against each other. And therefore we got the ratio the value of the ratio Q by M. And we also found the formula and using that formula, we found the relation between Q by M and the radius R. So Q by M is inversely proportional to R square. And that is our option B. So option B is the right option to this question. And that concludes this webisode of need preparation. And we have, we have made a, lot, a couple of other episodes on the chapter Moving Charges and Magnetism. You can view them using the link provided in the description down below. So if you want to access more of our useful and interesting content, then please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that notifications button, the bell icon in order to receive the latest updates on our useful and interesting content. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.